Hello. Welcome to another week of praying and fasting. And I, I should start just calling it consecration because that is what we are doing. We are consecrating our heart. We're, we're consecrating our emotions. We're consecrating our mind in a way that lines up with what we believe is coming in the physical and the the tangible in the the earth realm and you can't attain something uh from the non-physical from the spirit realm you can't attain it into for it to transfer over into the natural if you're constantly thinking things that are in opposition to what you're asking for so uh relationship if you're constantly thinking and then feeling about the absence of your person then guess what's going to continue to show up the absence of your person if you're constantly thinking and feeling contrary to what god has communicated to you is yours then you are actually in resistance to it and so it's not some other enemy opposing your desire is you. It's you opposing it. And so let's jump in. We're doing so we're we're at Song of Solomon 16 and 17 now. And we're about to hit chapter two. So Song of Solomon chapter one uh, verses 15 or I'm sorry, 16 and 17. And so like always, before we get started, I want you to take a moment and ask the Holy Spirit how you should be consecrating for this this coming week how how should you be consecrated in your mind how should you be consecrated maybe in your body how should be how should you be consecrated in your emotions the 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 consecration the fasting that this idea of fasting is the posture of letting go of something that is normal to you something that is normal to your ego something that's normal to your flesh and then you are allowing that to die allowing that to lose its power allowing that to lose its um, strong grip on you and then you're allow allowing the spirit of god to rise to the occasion your spirit because you are one with god there is no separation between you and the i am and so you're allowing uh the 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 power of the i am the power of all of who god is and we know in scripture god is spirit and another word for spirit is energy. I like to use them interchangeably because it helps it helps me to communicate what I'm trying to say in a different way. It allows the hearer to hear it differently. And when we hear something differently, then we can ponder it differently. And so I love the scripture that talks about uh, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. So if it's fullness of joy then that is god's dominant emotional state and then it says and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore so first we see the emotion of god and then we read that all the things that please god all the things that continue to make god feel the emotion that god is already embodying is is there forevermore so god is we talk about how, you know, God has no need, God has no lack, obviously. Um, but I feel like it's important to understand that as God is living, the same God that created the, the sun, the moon, and the stars, the same God that is uh, feeding energy spiritually to this universe, to this planet we are on, is the same God that is on the inside of you. And the same kingdom of God, right? God is a king. God is a ruler. These are all ways to try to express to us um, the the how high God is, how how raised up, how God vibes high, how God um, is continually in this posture of being elevated uh, ab above all others when we say lord of lords we're identifying there are other lords but you surpass them all you are the highest you you are the the most out of the others and so this is god's dominant posture this emotion 
And flowing from that emotion are these pleasures forevermore. And if God is living on the inside of you and you are not feeling joy consistently, meaning your your dominant emotions are something contrary to joy, then you are in direct opposition with your truest self. The you that you're going to be when this flesh body uh, is no longer needed. And so this is why I've been talking about emotions. Out of, out of the heart flows the issues. So then out of the heart is also going to flow the successes. This is why making how you feel, cultivating these emotions that mirror the fruit of God, the fruit of the spirit, peace, love, forbearance, gentleness, kindness, self-control, these things. This is why cultivating these things on the inside of you, because they are a match with God, is so important. Because from this emotional space flows pleasures forevermore. Don't believe the hype when people say, oh, you have to to, to, to really be without sorrow or pain you have to get to heaven in some cases they're right but what they're missing is the fact that heaven has now come to earth heaven this dimension this 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 plane that is elevated above where where we currently the dimension on earth that we currently are on this this dimension you are have full access to now so much so that that very kingdom, this kingdom, God's kingdom, God's home, where God dwells is now in you. The very place everybody talks about getting to once they transition from this experience is fully available now. And in order to access in the tangible, your emotions have to mirror the emotion of heaven. We already know there's no sorrow in heaven, what we call heaven. <laughs> there's no pain, no tears. And so everybody wants to get there because of the feeling. But that feeling is available right now. And so I want you to take a moment and ask the Holy Spirit, how would you like for me to be consecrating? How would you like, what would you like for my consecration to look like this week? So you can take a moment and do that now.